to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Amen. We love already. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in this morning. Um, um, there's a word from God uh, for you this morning. It is Hebrews chapter 10. Amen. Uh, I'm going to break up the scripture. It's a long chapter, but we're not going to read the entire chapter. But I am going to uh, break up some scriptures. I'm going to read some scriptures, and then we're going to skip down and read a few more scriptures. Amen. This comes from Hebrews chapter 10. Yeah. I'm going to begin in verse number 19. You can follow along silently for those of you who do have your Bibles your, with paper pages. Amen. <laughs> Turn to Hebrews. It's in the New Testament. Amen. Uh, if you if you have a cell phone, you don't have to turn. You just type it in. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to begin at verse number 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by having a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say his flesh, mm -hmm. and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith yes. without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Amen. Now we're going to skip down to verse number 32. We're going to skip down to verse number 32. Yeah. I like that. Hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful yeah. that promise. And then we skip down to verse number 32. Verse number 32. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated ye endured a great fight of afflictions, yeah. partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. He said, basically, remember uh, uh, the strength and energy that you had, and all the things that you endured, and you helped those who did endure. But ye had compassion of me in my bonds when I was in jail. You had compassion on me and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Yeah. Don't throw your confidence away. We had great recompense of reward. For ye, this is one of my favorite scriptures, yeah. for ye have need of patience, uh -huh. that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Uh -huh. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Yes. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, uh -huh. but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 This morning I want to talk tell you, don't go back. Amen. Yeah. Don't go back. Amen. Don't go back. Amen. Let's pray this morning before we go into the word. God, I thank you for this opportunity. I want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. I pray now, God, that you would bless this time, uh, uh, bless this opportunity, bless this word as it goes forth. I pray, God, that you would let your spirit make the difference. Speak to somebody's heart, oh God. Speak to somebody's situation. Speak to somebody. Answer prayers through this word, oh God. Uplift and encourage through this word. I pray that you would give direction and clarity. Yes, through this word, oh God, I ask God that you would just do what only you can do. And God, as I speak today, let my words flow. Help me to articulate the thoughts that you have placed and the revelation that you have given. That your people would develop the right kind of understanding and perspective yes, God. of our open hearts that they would receive today. Open minds that they would understand. Open eyes that they would get the concept that they would perceive the right vision and open their ears, God, that they would hear. Speak today, God, in such a way that nobody could take credit but you, that we could say, God, we heard yeah. you speak to us. Even though that I'm speaking to the general public, I ask, oh, God, that you would speak to individual situations and individual persons. In Jesus' name we pray. And every heart said, amen. 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 
Amen. I'm thankful and grateful to God. You know, I've been preaching throughout COVID. And so yeah, yeah. Uh, because of COVID, we were doing the service and, and you couldn't have that many people in the church because yeah. of the social distance. So when not that many people show up, it's not a problem because, you know, I'm used to doing it. Amen. But for those of you who are tuned in, for those of you who are here, we have a few people in the building. But for those of you who are here, those of you who are tuned in, the book of Hebrews yeah. has become one of the books that I have been looking into for the last few months. I've just been looking around, digging around, listening to it, studying it, breaking it down, trying to get the right kind of understanding. You know, sometimes what the Word of God is designed to do, the Word of God is designed to give you a, a, the right kind yeah. of understanding as it relates to God, the right kind of understanding as it relates to your faith, yeah. the right kind of understanding as it relates to your Christianity. Uh -huh. And so what I learned from studying in the book of Hebrews and reading through the book of Hebrews, it shows us, it teaches us something about God that's difficult to understand in our churches. But hopefully this morning I can bring you through the scriptures that Hebrews shows us that God changes his method of dealing with humanity, that God changes yeah. his method of dealing with humanity, that Hebrews is the same book that says that God is the same yesterday, yeah. today, and forevermore, but Hebrews is the same book that shows that God deals with humanity in a different way. He changes his method of dealing with humanity all through the Bible. And I want to point out that it's possible for God to be the same God. It's possible for God to require the same things from all of us, but be big enough to deal with each one of us individually. Yeah. And even throughout the Old Testament, he does not deal with Noah the same way he does with Abraham. He does not deal with Abraham the same way he deals with Jacob. He does not deal with Jacob the same way he does with Moses. He deals with each man individually yeah. because he's big enough to be the same God and require the same things from us, but not have to change, but, but be big enough to change of the way he deals with us individually. And I like that. I like that. In the same sense, God changes the way to reach him from the yeah. Old Testament to the New Testament. In the Old Testament, God used animal sacrifices. He used priests and he used prophets. But in the New Testament, he uses Jesus. And yeah. immediately Hebrews starts off with saying, in sundry times, in old times, he spoke to us through priests. He spoke to us through prophets. But now in these times, he has spoken to us through his son. And I want us to understand that God can change his yes. method without changing his essence because he's God. And he recognizes yeah. that everybody is not going to be the same. But but so he has to change his method in dealing with it. And I like that. And this is the struggle in spreading Christianity yeah. in the New Testament. The Hebrews have become so stuck in the old method that they were closed to God's new method. Yeah. And, and the struggle of the New Testament is that they were trying to get the Hebrews, the Jews, to understand that God no longer uses the animal sacrifice, that the old system was good for the time that it was in, yeah. but God has switched the way he deals with man. But the Jews, the Hebrews, could not get the full understanding and they rejected Jesus because they were stuck in the old method. And I just want to ask somebody this morning, have you subjected yourself to being stuck in an old way of faith, in an old way of getting to God or reaching or receiving from God? And sometimes what God will do when you get stuck in your ways, when you get stuck or locked into a method, God will shift some things in order to break you out of it. God will shift some things to break you out of your method and into his movement. And I want us to understand that all through the Bible, God constantly changes the way. At one point, he gives Israel victory by Moses holding up his hands. But the next victory he gives to Joshua, he says, you have to fight for it. You got to pick up your swords and shields. In one instance, 
resistance, God opens up the Red Sea for Moses. But when it gets to Joshua, Joshua has to step into the water in order for the water to part. And I'm just trying to get you to understand that God can change his method without changing his essence. And sometimes when you get stuck in the method, God will shift some things and shake up some things to break you out of your rigid method so you can get into the flow of his movement. And I want us to understand that. I want us to understand that Hebrews breaks down the difference between the Old Testament, which is the Old Covenant, and the New Testament, which is the New Covenant. And to simplify without going all the way deeper into it, it is God moving from outer ritual to inner relationship. I want us to get that. That the only difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is, is that God no longer uses outer rituals, but wow. he switches to inner relationship. It's moved from an outer connection to an inner connection. It yeah. is God moving his people out of the rigidness of religion and into the flexibility of relationship that God no longer requires animal sacrifices oh. and, and you no longer have to go to someone external in order to connect to him but Jesus made it possible yeah. uh, that you can have faith and believe on the inside and you and God can commune wherever you are outside of yeah. a priest or outside of an animal sacrifice because he becomes the sacrifice and he becomes the priest and yeah. so now what used to happen on the outside now God switches it to happen come on on the inside and I need somebody to understand that maybe you came into the house of God uh, expecting God to do something on the outside but in reality God is trying to do something on the yeah. inside that it has switched from being an outer religion to an inner relationship and if you got the outer religion right but you got the inner relationship wrong oh. you have still missed the oh. mark and I like it I like it because what it shows us about God is that he no longer wants to be put in a box of religion he no, he no longer wants to be put in a box of rules and regulations but it, it shows that he wants you to understand what it means to in relationship that, that relationship can forgive what religion cannot because it's a continuous inner uh, process and I, yeah. and I want us to understand that, that God does not want us to put him in a box and this is why when the Bible describes God it says that God is a spirit that he could have showed himself to us in a mold he could have showed himself to us in a figure but he didn't want us to get locked inside because if you want that you can't be another thing but I like that God describes himself as a spirit yeah. because he can be this and that at the same time he yeah. says to Moses when God describes himself he says I am that yeah. I am it's not that I am this or I am that but it's I'm this and yeah. I'm that yeah. I need somebody to get that and you ought to just thank God for being able to be this and that at the same time. He don't need you to put a label on him. He's not a man. He's not a woman. He's not a boy. He's not a girl. He's not a up. He's not a down. He's not a fox. He's not a lion. But he's this and that at the same time. He can be your comfort and my deliverance. He can be my peace and he can be your power. He can be your joy and my strength all at the same time. That's why I thank God. I thank God because he not just one thing, yeah. but whatever the situation calls for, he can be that. If you need a mother, he can be your mother. Yeah. If you need a father, come on, he can be your father. Yeah. If you need a sister, I need you to walk with me. He can be a sister. If you need a brother, he can be a brother. If you need a friend, he'll be a friend to all those things that will stand closer than yeah. If you need a doctor, he can be a doctor. And this is what I love about the God that I serve. I say that I thank God for not putting him
because he can do all things at the same time. And I love that God is a spirit because if he was a person like Jesus, Jesus could only be at one place at one time. But what I love about God being a spirit is that God can be with me and he can be with you at the, oh, I need somebody to help me at the same time. But I need us to understand that God is not about putting him in a box. That you can't put God in one place and not the other place. But because he's a spirit, he's able to lift me up while he's able to hold you up in two different places. But at the same time, he's able to hear my prayer and answer your prayer at the same. I need somebody to hear me this morning. That God doesn't want us to lock him up. In the box, and, and this is the understanding that Hebrews tries to present that God has moved from an outer to an inner. God has changed his dealing with man by the way of Jesus Christ. He's changed his dealings with man by way of Jesus Christ. It's no longer priests, it's no longer prophets, it's no longer animal sacrifices, but he changed in his way of dealing with man, and now he has used. Jesus Christ. And then he sends the Holy Spirit. And this becomes the struggle of the New Testament. The first century Christians were trying to project the new message, but it was rejected by many of the Jews. And when it says Hebrews, he's writing to the Hebrews, the people, the chosen nation of God. He's writing to them because they have rejected Jesus. They have rejected Jesus. And why have they rejected Jesus? They rejected Jesus because he did not come in the form that they thought he yeah. would come. That they rejected him because he did not come in the form that they thought he would come. They expected Jesus to come as a political figure to rescue them through the system of government and overthrow Rome and bring Israel or the Hebrew people back into power. But when Jesus does not come as a political figure, when Jesus does not come as a ruler of the synagogue, when he does not come as a Pharisee, when he does not come as a, as a kingly priest as they would expect, but he comes as a poor carpenter. He comes without status. He comes without clout, without having a big name. And the Hebrews could not accept him because he did not come in the form that they thought that he would come. And I want you to question it. Could it be possible that you are rejecting what God sent to be a blessing because it's not in the package that you wanted to come? See, we have put God in our own box. We we pray what we want and then we say, God, I want you to answer this prayer this way. I pray this prayer and God, I want you to answer this prayer this way. And, and oftentimes what ends up happening is, is that you miss what God has answered you with because you stuck on what you have in your mind. And, and I want us to understand this, that sometimes you can want this, but God will send you that, that you yeah. may want one thing, but God will send you what you want, but in a different form. You, you may ask God for a tree and God might give you seeds. You might ask God for a church and God might just give you a vision. You might ask God for a table and God just might send you some wood. I want you to understand that sometimes what you have in your mind is not what God may send yeah. you, but you can't get so stuck in your box that you miss uh, the blessing of God. Have you been rejecting what God sent to be a blessing? Consider that they prayed for the Messiah. Consider that they were expecting the Messiah. Consider that they wanted the Messiah to come and Jesus was right in their midst, but they never saw who he was. And I want you to consider that. It's possible that you are missing the answer to your prayers because you're looking for the idea that you had in your mind. And while you want God to answer a certain way, I want to minister to somebody that God is not obligated to answer you the way that you think he ought to answer. That God is not obligated to speak to you the way that He that you want him to speak. I read uh, the book of Job and Job is crying out to God and when God responds, God does not answer any questions that Job asks because he's God. And I need somebody to understand that God is not here to be your personal genie 
that God is not here to jump at every beck and call, but God is God, and he may or may not respond the way that you want him to, but you uh, just got to get it that God is God, and you got to open yourself to be acceptable to whatever God uh, wants to send you. Maybe you have missed the answers to your prayers because you're looking for it to come the way you want it, but God has another way. What if God has answered your prayers, but you have overlooked it? What if God has answered your prayers, but you have missed it? The answer in your mind is totally different yeah. than God's mind. And now I understand why David prays what he prays. He says, God make me to lie down. Oh, y'all remember that, right? In green pastors, why yeah. does God have to make me lie down in green pastors? It's because some right by your blessing. You can be so cautious uh, that you close your eyes and, and turn a deaf ear to your blessing. You can be so close that you can be standing in your blessing and still missing. And David gets it right when he says, God, I need you to make me lay down uh, in green pasture because I'm so blind sometimes I'll miss it. Sometimes I'm so selfish and close that I'll overlook it. But God, I need you to tell me when the time is right. I need you to show and I need you to let me know when it's okay. And I love the way that David puts it. Make me to lay down in green pastures. You gotta pray that God open your eyes so that you're not rejecting what he said to be your blessing. And I gotta thank God for making me to enjoy blessings that I didn't recognize at first. At first, I thought it was God turning against me, but he had to show me this is the place, come on, that you need to lay down. And I thank him. I thank God not just for the open doors, but I thank him for the closed doors. He, he closed the door to get me to go uh, a different way. Thank him for answering prayers that I didn't pray. Thank him for doing things that I didn't ask. And then he didn't do what I did ask, but he did do what I didn't ask. And I just got to thank him. Thank you, God, for making me lay down in the green pastures. Because if you let Marcus do it, Marcus is going to mess it up. If, if I go on my own mind, I'm going to make a mistake. But, yeah. but I thank God, and this is why the Bible says, if you acknowledge him, he'll help you to direct yeah. your, oh yeah, you got to pray to God, keep my eyes open, not to my will, but of God to your yeah. will. God, keep my understanding open, not to me, uh, but to you. That I may not recognize the blessing, but I need you to reveal it to me. I may not recognize when it's mine, but I need you to reveal it to me. I may not recognize what you're calling me into, but I need you uh, to reveal it. And we got to get out of being stuck and closed in our mind so that we can be open to what God is trying uh, to bless us with. And I need somebody to understand you got to come on out, come on out, come on out of your mindset, come on out of your mentality that God has switched it. That's what he said to the Hebrews. He said, uh, no longer priests and prophets, but I sent my son to you and you They rejected what God has sent to be a uh, blessing. And I need somebody to understand. Uh, you can't be rejecting what God has sent to be your blessing. Because what he'll do is he'll remove it. And then you'll just, I heard somebody say, you don't miss your water till your well run dry. And sometimes God has blessed you with what you asked him. That God has opened the door that you have asked him. And you, in your stubbornness, and you, in your closed-mindedness, have rejected it. And God, what he'll do is he'll just come on, remove yes. the blessing in order to get you to see. I sent it to you, but you said no. I opened the door, but you wouldn't walk through it. I moved in a way to be a blessing to you, but you were too stubborn to get it. And now God says, I'm just going to remove it. He says to the Hebrews, he said, I sent him, uh, but now you got to receive him. And some people did reject Jesus. Some people did reject Jesus, but some other Hebrews had accepted him. And, and here's the other side of that, because they accepted him. They accepted him. Some Jew Hebrews had converted. Some Jews had converted, but they converted with the expectation that Jesus was going to bring them a physical kingdom, a visible kingdom, an earthly kingdom, an earthly power uh, and authority. They, they had accepted Jesus with the anticipation that he was going to become king. They, they had accepted him with the anticipation 
that he was going to overthrow Rome. And instead, when they converted to Christianity, Christianity brought them opposition. And here's what we're writing in chapter 10. Because the writer now, he's writing because they had started wanting to go back into Judaism. And here's my question. What if what you started following God for, God does not give it to you? What if you came into the house of God, that you stepped into a relationship with God thinking that God was going to make you rich and the riches never come? What if what you anticipated God to do, he does not do yeah. in your life? The question is, will you turn back? Will you go back to your old ways? Will you go back to your old habits when God don't move like you wanted to move? Will you go back when you want and what you expect does not happen in your experience? When you turn around, when God don't do what you think he ought to do. Yeah. What if following God doesn't make you rich? What if following God don't make you famous? What if following God don't make you popular? What if following God don't get you married or make a church? What if following God don't get you what you expect to do? I, I, I understand that sometimes when disappointment comes, it snatches away the enthusiasm. And I'm glad that God does that because when enthusiasm is gone, that's when you see whether the commitment is real or not. Because I need somebody to understand that the day you said I do, that excitement and enthusiasm is gone, go away. I need somebody to get that. And when the enthusiasm is gone, the question is, where does your commitment actually? I need somebody to walk with me. And, and the Hebrews have been enthusiastic because they expected it to be one way. And then the experience showed it to be different. And then now the Hebrew writer has to tell them, oh, remind, remember your, your level of confidence. Hold fast the profession of your faith. It is him. Do, did you mean it when you said it? Did you, did you mean it? I need somebody uh, to hear me. Somebody married out there. Did you mean it when you said I do for better and I do yeah. for worse? Did you mean it when you say I do uh, in sickness and I do in health? Did you mean it when you said for somebody out there? Did you mean it when you said you was going to change your life? Did you mean it when you said you was going to quit smoking and drinking? Did you mean it when you said you was going to stop running women and chasing men? Did you mean it? He says hold fast the profession of your faith. Remember yeah. what you said. I need somebody to hear me that God is saying remember what you said, don't go back uh, to what you said you wasn't going to do. Don't go back to the stuff that you said you was going to leave behind. He says, hold fast the profession of your faith. Hold yeah. fast the profession of your faith because when excitement and enthusiasm is gone, that's when God wants to see your level of commitment. Why hold fast? Because he that promise is uh, faithful. And I love it. I love it. I thank God for being faithful in place I'm not faithful. I, I thank God for keeping his word even when I know I need somebody. When I don't keep my word, he still keeps his word. When I slide back that God still stands up, he says hold fast the profession of your faith for he is faithful. He has to remind them that God is faithful and he that will come, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. But I like the word it says away your confidence with have great recompense of reward. It's him reminding the Hebrews don't let doubt discourage you. Don't let disappointment discourage you. Don't let distractions dis distract your mind. Everything that you lost that God is going to give it back to you. Everything that went away God is going to give it back to you. Everything that you had to sacrifice God is going to give it back to you. For you have need of patience after you have done Uh, 
unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land. Come on, other living. And it sounds like what the Hebrew writer is telling the Hebrews. He's telling them that you got to know and you got to trust and you got to believe that no matter what it looks like, that you got to continue to believe in God. And it sounds a lot like what he says you have need of patience. The, the verse after that, David says, wait on the Lord. Yeah. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and yeah. he shall strengthen yeah. thine heart. And I need somebody to understand that it's not going to always look right, but if you just wait on him, it's not going to always be comfortable, but if you just wait on him, he shall yeah. strengthen thy heart. He concludes that verse with, wait I say on the Lord. If you don't believe, nobody else believe it when I say wait Persuaded by your faith that you have need of patience. 